Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to scrape this income statement from bar chart. We're also going to be scraping the rest of the pages and the rest of the pages, as you can tell by the link, are just indexed by this URL. So if you want page two, we would just replace this one with two. And in later videos, I'll try and scrape the cash flow statement and the balance sheet as well. So let's go to our R script. All right, so these are some of the packages we're going to require. And all you need for this tutorial is to specify a ticker you want to pull data for. So I created two functions. The first one will get you the very first page, which contains the first five quarters or the five most recent quarters. And the second function will do the same, but instead it will try pages two through 10 and we'll get the income statement if there's any data on those pages. So approximately 45 quarters plus the five first quarters. So you'll have 50 quarters of income statements for any particular ticker. So if we take a look at our first function, all I'm doing is specifying the URL and passing in the ticker. And again, these are quarterly. I'm gonna read HTML. I'm gonna look for the table in that HTML, convert it as a table, and then convert it as a data frame. Now the very next line gets you the value for the numbers in the income statement. So if we take a look at bar chart, I am looking for this particular text in that HTML so that we can later format these numbers. Now I did notice that for most of these tickers, whether it be a micro cap or a mega cap, I did notice all of them use thousands. I don't know if that's just across the board for bar chart, but if you do see a ticker with something different, then you'll go to this line and you'll go ahead and add another line specifying if it's millions and adding the appropriate number of zeros. So again, this line is just looking for that text in that HTML. And in the very next line, we just replace thousands with three zeros so that we can later format the numbers in the income statement. So let's run through an example. The ticker I am using is Apple. So I'm gonna go ahead and run some lines here. We're gonna take a look at DF. So what I wanna do next is move this first row as a header, but I need to add a column name for this very first column. So in the very next line, I'm just gonna assign that to description. So now we see that we have description here. So the next thing I'll do is just move up this row as a header. So that's what I'm doing in this line 21. If we take a look at DF, now we have the appropriate column names. So let's go back to our script. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove that first row. So the next couple of lines, we'll just get rid of any dollar signs or commas in any of these columns. So if we go ahead and run these lines, we'll take a look at our data frame we don't see any dollar signs or any commas. All right, so the next thing to do is I'm going to select certain rows only. So then I'll go ahead and run this block. I will then look and subset per row if any of these rows exist. And if they do, I will be returning them. And then I will later be R binding them to put back that data frame. So we'll do that by running this block. We're gonna get rid of any empty cases. And then I'll go ahead and R bind. So we take a look at our data frame. We now see that we do have an NA row, and that's just because Apple does not have any interest expense. So we'll go ahead and get rid of this row by looking for any NAs, and then specifying where that NA is at. So we'll make sure it's a data frame again. And if we take a look at our data frame, we have effectively gotten rid of that row. All right, so let's go back to our script. So the next thing I'll be doing is converting these numbers into numeric values so we can make calculations and then make sure it's a data frame. And then finally, just return that data frame. So if we take a look at our final result, we now have the rows we want, and these columns are all numeric. All right, so that's just if you wanna get the very first page for the first five quarters. So what the next function will do is get the rest of the quarters, and we're gonna go ahead and C bind it with this data frame so that we have one continuous data frame for the income statements. So let's go back to our script. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this function. I'll go ahead and run it. And I'm gonna test the function by passing in the ticker. And if we take a look at page one, and we see that this data frame looks complete and accurate. All right, so let's go into our next function, which will grab the rest of the income statements for the following pages. It's almost exactly the same as our first function. The main difference is that we're going to create separate URLs for the pages. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the report page contains the next chunk of income statements. So here I'm just gonna pass in the ticker 
and the report page I'm gonna set equal to page two through 10. So then we'll have a complete list of URLs. I'm gonna go ahead and pass those URLs as a list by using L apply. I'm gonna set the script to sleep for three seconds so that bar chart doesn't block RIP. And for each of these URLs, I'm gonna read HTML. And if there's no errors, I'm gonna be returning that HTML script. Once we have our list of pages, I'm gonna remove any empty pages. And then I'm gonna pass each of those HTMLs as a list by using L apply and essentially just subsetting what we did in our first function. So that's what this will do. I will then combine all the income statements and C bind them or column bind them and I'll be returning that data frame. So if we go ahead and minimize this function, I'll go ahead and test it out. So this will take a while just because we have to wait those three seconds for each request. All right, so when that's done running, I'm gonna go ahead and combine the first page with the rest of the pages. And I'm gonna assign that to a variable called IS for income statement. So if we take a look at IS. So as you see, we have 51 columns or 50 quarters plus this description column. And we have quarters ranging from June, 2021, all the way to June of 2009. So now that we have all these quarterly income statements, we can now calculate some financial ratios. So I have built a function where you pass in this income statement and it will calculate some financial ratios. So let's take a look at that function. So all we need to pass in for this function is the income statement and the ticker. And if we open up this function, we start off by calculating the gross margin, which is just the gross profit divided by the sales and I'm rounding that to four decimal places, and I'm going to suppress the warnings. Sometimes in the income statement, you might have some NAs, so this will just suppress any warnings out in your console. So we're gonna save that in GM for gross margin. I'm gonna convert that as a data frame, and if you see this T, that just means I'm just transposing to make it a row instead of a column. I will then add a row description and column names. So I repeat the same process for the profit margin, which is the net income divided by sales. I also wanted to add the stock price at the end of that quarter. So as you see, I'm using get symbols from Quamod by passing in the ticker. I'm gonna convert that data to quarterly data and I just want the close. So all that will be saved into temp. So things started to get tricky because the index in this temp variable is actually a year quarter format. So I needed to convert the dates in my income statement, which are these here into the same format. So we do that by using as year quarter. And here you see that I'm passing in that header for our income statement and the format is month and a four digit year. So I'm gonna save that in queue dates. I'm gonna order in decreasing since that's the order that my income statement is currently set to. I will then convert the stock prices to data frame. And since the stock prices range from the year 2000, it won't always match up with the quarters in the income statements. So in order to match up the stock prices with each particular quarter, what I'll be doing is I'm gonna create an empty data frame, which is gonna be called 2R. And then for each of the quarters in the income statement, I'm gonna pass in and convert the column name into this here quarter format. I'm gonna be checking the stock prices to make sure that we have that particular quarter. If it creates an error, that means that we don't have that stock price for that particular quarter. So I'm gonna set that equal to an A. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep looping until all columns are exhausted. And I'll be using CBind, put all the stock prices together. So once we have that vector, I'll go ahead and add a description and just name it stock price. And then I'll reformat the column names so that it matches up to our income statement. All right, so now that we have the stock prices, I'll go ahead and add a PE ratio. And as a side note, it won't consider negative earnings. So we have negative EPS, it'll still return a PE ratio. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and annualize the basic earnings per share by multiplying it times four. So that'll give us the annual EPS. And the PE ratio is of course just the price divided by the annual EPS. And I'll be rounding that to four decimal places and suppressing any warnings in case we have any NAs. I'll then return it as a data frame, add a description, and add the column name so that it matches up to our income statement. Finally, just combine our gross margin, profit margin, our stock price, and our PE ratio, and then return that as a data frame. So we'll go ahead and test this function out. So I'll go ahead and minimize it. Go ahead and run it. 
go ahead and run this line to get the ratios. So if we take a look at ratios, we have four rows and 51 columns. So it should be no problem if we just row bind this data with our income statements. So if we take a look at our income statement. Now we have our income statement plus the additional four rows. All right, guys, so let's go back to our script. So the next line just writes the table to your desktop and saves it as a CSV file in case you want to do additional work in the spreadsheet. You can also transpose the table as a data frame, which is a little bit more useful if you're trying to work through this data in Excel or something similar. So if we take a look at IST. So now our table is transposed and I'll go ahead and write that as a table in my desktop and save it as a CSV file. So if we open up that CSV file, so this is our data in the CSV file, but I went ahead and formatted the columns so that the final result will look something like this. Now that these numbers are formatted in Excel, it's much easier to the eye and each of these rows represents a different quarter. So you can go ahead and analyze this in a spreadsheet. All right, guys, well, this concludes the video. I will go ahead and work on an additional script to get the rest of the financials from bar chart. I hope this video was useful. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.